Total War Three Kingdoms ask you to take on the role of one of 11 legendary warlords and unite China under one banner. But while the great generals fight for power, others seek to exploit the turmoil. Jingjiang is a symptom of the era. In a world without law, chaos abounds, and banditry rules the countryside. But the common man will only stomach so much oppression before they rise up again. Jingjiang, the bandit queen, leads a group of anarchists in Yan province. With a reputation so ferocious, she fought her way into the official records of the Three Kingdoms, leading a group of bandits across the Black Mountains to plunder her way to infamy. As a faction leader, Jingjiang's traits focus on shortened mustering times and increased income from tributary states. Jingjiang can also loot and destroy any captured settlements with more ruthless efficiency than her peers. And her faction will gain access to two unique Axe Infantry units, who gain a bonus to charge but are weak against cavalry. She also gains access to two unique buildings, the Bandit Lair, which boosts replenishment at the cost of income, and the Tributary Hall, which extorts extra income from tributary states. True to her historic roots, she'll begin the campaign as a small horde faction, harassing the north of China. She begins hidden deep in the mountains, at war with the Han Empire and the nearby Dongzhuo. But while this provides a safe refuge at the start, your bandit troops won't sit idly by, and you'll need to leave the mountains to find wealthy cities to sack and plunder. Her gameplay will center around subduing other territories and forcing them to pay tribute to survive, leaving them a warning to other states. But as her infamy grows, diplomacy will become increasingly difficult. Luckily, infamy and fear bring their own rewards. High infamy in game means higher morale on the battlefield and more experience for your characters. But it's also Jingjiang's primary source of prestige points, which you'll need to advance your faction rank and eventually proclaim her the empress of a new dynasty. For the bandit queen, momentum is everything. She gains infamy from winning battles, striking settlements, and forcing regular tribute from them. But this decays if you wait around for too long. A shark on the land, Jingjiang must always drive forward or else her rebellion will fail. But as her power grows, she becomes more and more like the regime she fights to bring down. Old Han structures will remain in place when settlements are taken, and Jingjiang will have to use them in order to lead what is essentially a new state. Her Guanxi is that she begins the campaign with her sworn sister, Lu Jing, as her second in command. The records of the Three Kingdoms is actually unclear if Jingjiang was in fact one woman or two, and CA chose to cover their bases by making Lu Jing as the lieutenant. But while they're fighting to bring down the corrupt Han Empire and restore power to the people, their cause doesn't win them any allies. So you must focus on building up a circle of trusted characters and ensure a continuing dynasty, which, in the case of Jing Jiang, may be inherited by a daughter, as hers is the only matrilineal faction, where children can carry on her name and not the husband's. Her initial dilemma focuses on the other nearby bandit leader, Zhang Yan. When the mountain bandits hear of the open war between Yun Shao and Gongsun Zan, they swoop in like vultures, hiring themselves out to the highest bidder. And Zhang Yan calls all the other bandit leaders to the feast. Jing Jiang can join him and embroil herself in the larger conflict. Or you can deny his request and take his unguarded lands for yourself and claim supremacy over the mountains. Regardless, the dilemma gives you a chance to answer the age-old question. Is there honor among thieves? As for what happens to Jing Jiang historically, well, let's have a sidebar conversation. Right. Of all the starting warlords in Three Kingdoms, Jing Jiang is the most surprising. The only reference to her comes from a single line in the historic records of the Three Kingdoms, which simply said that she was a bandit leader operating out of Yan province. And that's it. We know nothing else about her. So her inclusion here in the Total War Three Kingdoms game was a bit of a surprise to everyone. 
The official CA response is that Total War has always been about taking footnotes in history and giving you the opportunity to rewrite it. So in a game packed with huge names, Jingjiang offers a true underdog campaign. But even this was met with ire, that those resources weren't put to another of the era's more influential male figures. I've been asked about this issue many times, and personally, I think CA is just trying to increase their audience. 97% of the viewers of this video series have identified as male, and the study of military history in general has always been a bit of a boys club. You only have to look at recent Total War headlines to see a larger problem about female representation in their games. The simple fact is, female gamers are more likely to play a game with female representation, and in my own videos, those including a female guest show a marked diversification in viewership. So if including a playable female character expands interest in the subject to those previously excluded, um, I support it unequivocally and look forward to welcoming the other 49% of the world to the Total War player base. Because Jing Jiang's campaign offers something different for Total War Three Kingdoms, a ferocious warrior that requires constant aggression and bucks all societal norms. So if you want the challenge of striking out against the status quo, you can tear through China on a tide of infamy that will only stop with her victory or death. Thanks for watching. Total War Three Kingdoms is available for pre-order now. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out some of my others in the series and learn more about the Warlords of the Three Kingdoms.